Welcome to another episode of CTEC's Tips and Tricks. Today we're going to build fence diagrams and project them to 2D cross sections. We'll begin by loading one of our sample applications that's in the geochemistry folder, geocreek 3 dplumeshellv um, I've loaded that already and, and let it run to save some time. And we're going to edit this application by deleting a number of the modules. So I'm going to hold down the shift key, select the modules I don't need, and cut them or delete them. So now we just have the external edges of the model. And to this we're going to add post samples. And we need a thin fence. Um, so let's let's bring in the post samples and I'll do that by just connecting the file port from Creek 3D. And we need a path along which we will need a path along which the fence will be created. So we'll create that with draw lines. Although you need to understand that these lines can come from any source, shapefile, CAD file, um, but in this case we're going to just draw them interactively. So we'll start off with this application and I'm going to pick my path and I'm going to intentionally choose a path that goes from boring to boring and I'll explain why later but uh, so I'll just be holding down the sh alt key and click and draw a path and as you can see I'm intentionally not drawing a straight line path so this is the path that I want once I draw this um, I can disconnect the purple port and this line will stay and we'll pass this line to the thin fence module to the right input port and we'll pass in exponent scale into thin fence and when we connect it we can see that we have created this cross section uh, I don't you don't need to have the exploding. I'm going to turn off the explode distance, which was on by default. And so we have we have uh, our fence diagram. Now, the next thing is to create uh, a projected 2D version of this. And I could do that by changing the settings in post samples and thin fence. But I can also um, kind of have my 3D version and my 2D version in parallel in the same application. So I'm going to duplicate these two modules. I'm going to select these two modules, choose Edit, Duplicate. Now they're not connected up yet, although when I duplicate them, they will, post samples, will inherit um, the file name, or it should, but we'll just pass it through. And we'll um, connect, draw lines to post samples and to our new thin fence and again we'll connect exploded scale to our second thin fence. Now we go into each of these modules and turn on the straighten to 2D option and we'll do the same thing in, in thin fence straighten to 2D and once we do that we're going to grab a second viewer which we're going to hook up to our application. Connect post samples. Connect thin fence. And here we have our cross section that's straightened. Now, compare that to this one. You can see that it's the same, except that it's basically as if this was made out of paper and you just laid it flat. And only the borings um, that are on this fence diagram are going to match the concentrations in this fence. So you'll notice that I have one, two, three, four, five, six borings that define the path of my cross section. Those are these one, two, three, four, five, and six, or five and six. So some of these others are borings that were within a certain distance of the cross section and that distance is specified in post samples and so this is going to be this one post samples number one and so it's 
dist 2D distance to line. So I'm going to make this distance small, just in case I didn't draw my lines perfectly. I'm going to change it to be 3. And when I do that, then the number of borings that show up here are just the six borings that pass through. Now notice that those are going to match the concentrations in my fence diagram. So everything's going to look more appropriate. And this is something you have control over, whether you want to include those nearby borings or whether you want only the borings that are very close or that actually define your fence cross-section. So now we have a single application that we can change the path to create the cross-section and view it in 3D as well as 2D. Um, let's add to this um, axes on our 2D cross-section. So I'll do that based on the extents of the fence diagram. I still want the Z scale to apply, so I'm going to pass that port in. And when I connect that, then you can see I get um, this. And so if we bring up Bazel, um, a top view is looking at our fence on edge. If we go to a horizontal view from the south, um, there is there's looking directly at our fence and if we make this full scale and you can see that our Z coordinates um, are properly scaled so notice here the distances in Z are not the same as the distances along the path length of the fence cross-section this is not really a true X coordinate because it is the parametric path along which the fence is defined um, and projected onto a 2D plane so at this point, if we just want this 2D view, um, we've created it here in, in MVS. Um, the, only th the only other things we can do are uh, we can add legends and, and we can do a few other things to view our geology. So let's, let's enhance this a little bit. So I'm going to take this app and just give myself a little more space. Um, uh, let's go back to uh, thin fence and instead of viewing that directly I'm gonna disconnect it from the viewer and pass it to external faces and I'm gonna color by material ID so now I'm doing a geology fence cross-section uh, I'm gonna edit that data map so that they look more like geologic colors. I'm going to load one of our standard geology data maps. So I'm going to do this one, five materials. And I'm going to make it slightly transparent. And now, so that I can see both chemistry and geology at the same time. I'm going to use isolines. Connected to thin fence. I'm going to have it do just two isolines per decade. And that looks nice. But I see two things that I don't like. First, this outermost band that is at my minimum value. It is not really possible to compute an accurate contour at a value that you don't have values both above and below. Since this is the minimum clamped value in our grid, that's why that line looks so jagged. So I can get rid of that line um, by just changing the min here, and I'll do that. And then I'm also going to add labels. So let's do that and I turn on these flip toggles because I'd already experimented with this. Now when we zoom in on this, you notice a couple things. Um, the labels look upside down in some places and right side up in others, but they're too big. So I'm going to reduce the label spacing and reduce the size and regenerate. That's much nicer. And then just the last thing is I'd like this label to be on the bottom. So I can do that by changing this label start. And we can move it around more, but that
that looks good. Now, you can't change the start for every contour just for all of them, but usually you can make this give you the appearance that you like. So zoom back out. Look at our model. It looks very nice, um, especially when I print it or create a high resolution output of it. It's going to look fabulous with those fine contour lines. The only thing that's missing are legends. So let's add some legends. And I say legends plural because I want one for my geology. Pass in the geologic names. And boom, I've got that. And I want another for the chemistry or the ISO lines. Now, the default position of legend will be in the same position, so they'll be on top of each other. Um, I have to go in and move this legend. That looks pretty good over there. And then finally, I need to put the labels on the other side. Now, this is possible, but we don't make it quite as easy as you might like, but to do that, I need this label offset to be negative. So I can do that by just changing this minimum here. Move the label offset to be slightly negative, And change my forward-facing fonts to be right justified. So you can see already I'm very close. And now with my offset, that's too much. I'm going to just have a small negative offset. Not enough. right there. And that looks pretty good. Interval density is 110, 1, 3, 10, 30, 100. Notice that's the same as my contours. I saw on contours, so I like how that look, looks. And now if I make this full screen, that is my cross section which we can output um, in high res using output images or create a 4DIM of. And at this point, we are done. And thank you for watching this um, episode of Tips and Tricks.